Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Oves Coma, and I'm a board member of WIA Europe Barcelona. Welcome to the first uh, Space for Change conference of this 2021-22 season. And many thanks to our speakers of today, Alba Badia and Daniel Cantos, for uh, making it possible. Before starting, I would like to explain you the upcoming events that uh, we have organized. As I already said, today we are having a Space for Change conference starting tomorrow uh, and continuing through Saturday. Uh, there is an event taking place called Euroavia Mission, which is a hackathon in which different teams of students will have to solve problems regarding the space industry. In a couple of weeks, on October 20, we will have a Women for Space conference with Lucy Poulet, who currently works at NASA. In November 17, uh, we will have another Women for Space conference with Laia Rivas, as well as our first workshop, which will be about the design and development of small satellites. In December, we will have another Women for Space conference with Sara Corregero. We are still working on organizing more events for November, December, and the next year. You can follow us on our social media, Instagram and Facebook, uh, or subscribe to our newsletter to be up to date with all our events. Without further delay, I would like to introduce our speakers of today and the organization, Cosmic Research. Cosmic Research is a nonprofit student association focused on suborbital rockets. They are the most prolific Spanish rocketry group uh, focused on suborbital rockets. They have launched over 35 rockets in five years. They serve as launch contractors during European Space Agency CANSAT competitions in Spain, while they collaborate with INTA, which stands uh, for uh, National Institute of Aerospace Technique, uh, in order to launch the most powerful student-made Spanish rocket ever made, Pondar. Alba Badia is currently the president and team leader of Cosmic Research, and Daniel Campos, Cantos sorry, is the secretary of the association and coordinator of the aerial segment. Today, they will explain us how the association works and the two main projects that they are currently conducting. On the one hand, the CANSAT missions with educational purposes. On the other hand, the ambitious mission BONDAR to, to test and demonstrate new technologies. If you have any questions, you can write them in the chat during the presentation. Thank you and enjoy the presentation. As I said earlier, many thanks, Daniel and Alba, uh, for being with us today. And now the word is yours. Thank you, Alej. Um, as he said, we are Daniel and Alba, uh, members of the Student Association Cosmic Research. And today we are going to explain our association, um, a little of history and the projects that we are developing currently. So Danny, if you want to start. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. So. Basic info, most of it has been already been um, given by Alej. Nonetheless, as mentioned before, we are non a non-profit student association. We were founded in uh, 2016 by four uh, friends uh, at Terrassa, at the UPC of Terrassa. Over the years, we've, been, we've made 20, 36, 36 rocket launches. And through, it, through these launches, we've launched as well 100 uh, concepts. Uh, what they are will be explained uh, later on. So to be able to develop all these um, our missions and to launch our rockets, we have sponsors among them, both uh, private and public institutions that aid us in different forms, for instance, by giving, giving us tools, knowledge, or money. So um, the goal of the, of the association, the, the vision, a uh, general goal. The vision would be to become uh, leaders in student rocketry in Europe and elsewhere. Nonetheless, they, um, each day, daily, what we do is to develop uh, suborbital rockets, uh, to train students, our members, and also to start society, to have some purpose beside that. 
So um, starting with the story, uh, a small a small explanation. Uh, in 20, uh, as mentioned before, in 2016, uh, Cosmic Research was founded by four UPC students. Uh, during the, the first year, th that first year, uh, only commercially available rockets were launched. Nonetheless, already in 2017, the launch of the resting rocket was made, which, which was the first fully student-made rocket uh, done by Cosmic Research, which reached an apogee of around two kilometers. What, what to this day, I think it stands as the altitude record for student rocketry here in Spain. So uh, in 2017 as well, um, we took part for, um, for the first time as launchers in the concept competition. Although we'll explain later on what do these competitions consist on. And uh, the concepts were launched via a modified kit that was called Ansari. 2018, concept competitions uh, were hosted as well. Nonetheless, we were contacted by ESA, not only to participate as we did in, as launchers in the Spanish competitions, but also um, to participate in a bid for the Cansat Europe hosting offer. Uh, uh, although a lot of effort was put into, into it, at the end, it was not chosen. Nonetheless, having been selected for such an important bid is nonetheless an important milestone. In 2018 as well, the Project Wonder uh, actually took off with basically theoretical uh, developments. In 2019, and to serve the launch of this Wonder rocket, the development of the Nebula series of solid propellant uh, rocket motors was made, which consisted in three motors and five uh, hot static tests of, as mentioned before, fully student main motors. Nevertheless, in 2020, last year, we um, established a firm contact with INTA, which uh, nowadays um, aids us in our Bondar project, with, which allowed, allowed us to put the Bondar project into um, full, more into reality and to, in a sense, restart the mission, start working even harder, which brings us to this day. So, also, uh, I think some, ima some images may be interesting uh, as to understand the story. On the left, that'd be Valentina, a uh, modified kit that was launched in 2016, one of the first, if not, uh, I think, the first rocket of the association. On the second image, that's the flight of Resnik, a drone view of Resnik's flight, up to, as mentioned before, two kilometers. In 2018, there's an example of one of the rockets used for that year's uh, concept competitions. 2019, the statics test of the Nebula 3, the final um, motor of the Nebula series. And finally, in, 20, in the 2020, there's an image of the first, the Maiden flight of the crystal rocket, which today is the main uh, workhorse for uh, to launch CANSATs for the CANSAT competitions. So currently we are developing two different missions. On one hand, the Bondar mission, and on the other hand, the Kansat mission. Starting with the Kansat mission, I think that um, first we need to explain what is a Kansat competition. These are competitions uh, promoted by ESA, the European Space Agency, and here in Spain are um, organized by SR Spain, the office educa the education office of ESA in, in Spain. And in this competition, the students between 14 and 19 years have to develop um, mini satellites, uh, CANSAID satellites. Um, and these satellites, um, in order to be um, to, um, to evaluate the performance uh, of these satellites, they need to be launched to an altitude of approximately 500 meters. So here, um, so we um, provide these launch services since 2018, um, as uh, Danny mentioned before. We've been designing, building, and operating um, rockets that are capable of launching cancers. And here you can see some or or main uh, uh, customers. Um, SR Spain, La Generalitat de Catalunya, and the Planetario of Pamplona. Here you can see the rocket that we designed for the CANSAT competitions of uh, 2020. 
Um, the name of the rocket is Krista. Uh, fun fact is that um, we name uh, all of our rockets with name of female astronauts. Uh, more precisely, the the Krista comes from Krista um, McColfi, um, one of the seven victims that died in the accident of the Challenger. Um, well, the the length of the rocket is 2.10 meters. The outer diameter is, five, is 15, uh, 15 centimeters. The lift of weight is 9.5 kilograms. And the apogee, as I mentioned before, is 500 meters. Um, the rocket has a monocoque structure and a modular design. Starting from the end, we can see the motor module. It contains the motor of the rocket, we use a, a commercial uh, motor. Uh, then we find the payload uh, module. Um, here is where the cancers uh, are during the flight. And then uh, there's the avionics module. Um, and since these competitions every year are more and more popular, um, we need to improve in 2020 the the capacity of the rockets um and for example the rocket has a capacity of up to six cansats that's a huge improve because the the rockets that we designed before this one uh, only have a capacity of three cansats so yeah and then uh talking to uh, about the other mission there's the bonder mission this is the flight uh, ship mission of the association and is the most ambitious project that we ever developed. Um, the first, uh, the main objective of this mission is to launch a rocket to the stratosphere. That means uh, that the rocket has a target apogee of uh, nine kilometers. And in this mission, we uh, want to design a rocket, but also we want to design and build all these systems that are necessary to be able to launch a rocket. So in the first flight of the rocket, we want to validate um, all the technologies that we've been developing. And that technologies include the flight simulator, that is a, a simulator that we develop ourselves. Um, and now we are validating with the commercial uh, software ASTOS. The second technology that we develop is the, well, the rocket structure and the avionics of the rocket. Um, there's also the launch uh, platform and the ground-based avionics. And that's the second uh, objective of this mission. The third one is to validate and improve the launch operations. And the fourth one is to increase the uh, people's interest in space. And also we want to show that students, um, a little team of 10 students uh, is able to design and launch a rocket. In this mission, we have two main collaborators. Um, the first one is INTA, um, the National Institute of Our Special Technology here in Spain. Um, they um, have been mentoring us through all the, the process um, and they, are, um, they have helped us, we, they had helped us with um, all the documentation and technical details. And also they will provide us the launch site. We are going to launch Wonder from uh, Huelva, uh, more precisely from the uh, El Arenosillo test center. And the other um, collaborator of the project is the another uh, rocket association here in Spain. Um, this is Biscay team, uh, a university team from the Basque country. And more precisely, uh, two students uh, have been uh, helping us with the development of the avionics of the rocket. Now entering into more details about uh, the Bonder rocket. Here you can see um, the rocket. Um, the name is Bonder, and it comes from the name Roberta Bonder, the first uh, um, Canada female astronaut and the first um, neurologist um, to uh, go to space. The, the rocket has a length of 2.6 meters 
an outer diameter of um, 13.1 centimeters, a lift of weight of 35 kilograms, and an apogee uh, between seven and 10 kilometers. And this is a supersonic rocket um, and the uh, maximum velocity if one is 1,500 kilometers an hour. The rocket um, has also a monocoque structure and a modular design. Starting from the end, we find the, the motor module. And for this first flight, we will use a commercial solid propelled uh, motor. Um, then there's the, the recovery module. Um, this module contains all the recovery uh, items, um, the parachutes, and other items that we need to recover the, the rocket. Um, there's two parachutes, the drogue parachute and the main parachute. And uh, the last module is the avionics module. Um, it contains all the electronics of the rocket. Um, this, uh, the avionics has to, um, how to say, two objectives, so, yeah. The first one is to send back data. Um, for example, GPS uh, data, and also uh, it, uh, it commands the separation between the two models. Um, the separation is here between the avionics module and the other two. And that is to uh, allow to release the parachutes, basically. And um, the main characteristic of the rocket, or the most interesting characteristic of the rocket is that the rocket is a prototype of a sounding rocket. A sounding rocket is a rocket that has a, a space dedicated to a payload. Um, and this payload can be, for example, an experiment that needs, uh, needs uh, altered gravity conditions, microgravity, hypergravity, um, conditions are, that are given during the flight of the rocket. So um, in the first flight, um, this space will not, uh, um, is not going to be used, but we hope to use it in the future. And the space is here. And um, is a uh, space for a payload up to five, uh, 0 0.5 kilograms. Here you can see some photos. Um, in March of this year, we went to, to the launch site to perform uh, um, different tests. Um, and here you can see some photos. Um, here there's the, the Bondo rocket um, in the launch pad. Um, here it is also in the launch pad, but this is the Resnick rocket. Um, here, there's the, um, there's the, um, I don't know how to say it, there's the, the box that we will use to, to be, to transport the rocket from Tarasa to Huelva and then uh, from the hangar to the launch site. Um, here, um, there's people working on the Optronico. This is where the uh, electro the ground uh, system of the avionics is uh, put it. And then um, here there's two members of the team in the in the control uh, room. And thank you very much for attending to this uh, to our presentation. We are very happy and we hope you enjoy it. And also we are very thankful with the organization of the event. Um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to come here to explain uh, all of our projects. And here you can see all the sponsors that we have um, this season. We are very thankful uh, with them also. Um, and last thing, here you have our contact information. There's the web page link, the, um, the email of the association. And we invite you to follow us in social media. Um, you can find us in Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. 
um, using the name Cosmic Research altogether. So if someone have a question, I think now it's the moment. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say congratulations on your amazing work. Um, most of the people are usually focused on the satellite side. But launchers are necessary to be launched, to launch, to lift off the, the, the satellites on orbit. And, and most of the people is, is missing this or is getting this, this kind of information. And based on that, and my question is why rockets? Because there are a lot of things on, on a space field that is really fascinating. The people used to do cat sets or used to do uh, applications or why rockets? That's actually a good question. I don't know, Danny, if you want to say something. Yeah, uh, if I can jump in. So why rockets? I'd say because rockets are cool, but no, I will. <laughs> I agree. I agree answer. on that. No, it's, the, a, it's a good reason. Yeah, no, no. This, this rocket uh, was conceived as a prototype for a experimental, for a possible future bigger rocket that is capable of uh, allowing investigators to put their payloads into to develop some um, hypergravity during the ascent part and also um, in gravity during the, the apogee uh, to develop some kind of um, experiment and other such things that may be interesting for for investigators. That was the main objective of the, of the rocket. Nonetheless, I'd, I'd say also that rockets are one of the, let's say most, hmm, could say it, most inspiring, that's my opinion, no, but I, I do believe it's one of, one of the best ways to inspire also, uh, as mentioned before, one of the objective of the association is also to transmit this this love for space and i do believe rockets are a great way satellites as well but nonetheless rockets do have this uh, in my opinion again this capability this characteristic that may be better for these purposes um, if i can add something yeah. in my case uh web rockets um because i found them amazing they are the only vehicle that are capable of sending us to space Mm -hmm. So, for me, are incredible. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and based on that, which is the next step after the launchment? Uh, the next that you you are talking about the launchment of this uh, prototype, this 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 uh, rocket, and which is the next step for the association after that? What will we happen? Well, I think Danny answered this question <laughs> a little bit, um, but um, the next step is to gain experience with this launch and to continue um, designing and building more powerful rockets until we reach the, the space. Okay. And yeah, and if it's possible for us to um, serve society, um, having a space for experiment or something, um we will be very happy so that's the next step i think okay. daniel do you want to yeah. i completely agree i'd say go bigger if possible go bigger always perfect <laughs> uh do you think um do you have in mind to create a startup or a commercial product based on this work As mentioned before, this at the end of the day is a prototype. So for this specific prototype, is it um, it is possible to 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 make an enterprise out of it? I'd say no. But as mentioned before, for a small, low cost uh, launch platform, yes, I'd say it's I, I'd say it so. For maybe smaller investigation teams that may not have the money for bigger uh, launch platform, I'm thinking I don't know, Rexus or such. I'd say that'd be a, an, an option, a market there. Nonetheless, that's not our main focus, I'd say. I'd say that we, at the end of the day, we serve society, we try to improve our knowledge and to build rockets. So commercialization as cosmic research, that's on the objective. At the end of the day, we are not profit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So um, that would be amazing and an amazing adventure. But um, now um, this uh, 
the development of rockets is too expensive and now we are students it's not um, easy for us but we have the support of a lot of uh, sponsors and it is too difficult to to privatize this the design of the mm -hmm. rocket because it's too expensive again so mm -hmm. maybe there is also a technology or something that you could create your own business it could also i don't know because I'm not uh, focused on that, it could, I don't know, it could be also a possibility on that. Um, could you also list or explain the most important benefits to be part of the association from your opinion, from the technical and personal point of view, based on your experience? What do you think that is the, are, there are the benefits to be part of? just to claim more people to join the association that is, is always, I understand, welcome. The main benefit for me is the opportunity that uh, we all have to, to learn how to work uh, in a group um, because sometimes it's difficult. Um, here, there's no professors to help us. Um, this is our, uh, by ourselves, so um, that's the, the one of the main benefits, I think. The other one is that um, we need to work and work uh, so hard to uh, find sponsors. Uh, we need to um, uh, think publications to be able to um, attract people. Um, it's like creating a little uh, company but uh, without doing it. And I think um, that give us an experience that um, other students doesn't have, so doesn't, don't have. So that's the main benefit, I think, for me. I don't know, Danny, do you want to explain? Yes, yes, I mostly agree. Of course, Cosmic Research is not a company. Nonetheless, we try our best to be as efficient to work as professionally as possible and that at the end of the day is an experience that can be in a sense used Training. and get you can get a benefit of that when you actually join the workforce as you already will have this in a sense this knowledge this discipline this and i'd say as well from the personal point of view of course these projects are personally fulfilling at least and they are a great way to to use the time because again although universities is difficult there's there's times when you want to put the knowledge into practice and you want to 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 feel fulfilled while doing it not only filling up the exams filling up um, problems but to actually see something that you build with your efforts in a sense without your blood and tears if you want uh, actually made it to in the case of concepts to fulfilling its mission and releasing those concepts in the case of wonder well if hopefully to reach the, the stratosphere i'd say that's also great it's a beautiful project and, and really inspiring and i think that if if you can uh, i don't know if you're involved in some kind of activity for diffusion or mentoring young people younger than you <laughs> but um it, it's it's really an inspiring project and, and, and i want to congratulate for that for this amazing work and and just last question from my side um how do you value it's like a general question about uh what do you think about uh how do you value the aerospace sector both positive and negative on the impact on the society because when you, I don't know, maybe you are so young, but when you, you have been working in space for a long, um, usually the people say, why you are spending so much money to go to the moon or, or <laughs> but which is your, what do you think about that? When somebody's asking something like that, uh, what do you think about the, the positive or negative effects of the space research? Danny, if you want yeah, to- Yeah, do I jump in? Yeah, <laughs> no, no problem. No, I, wa I want to jump in because actually that's a question, actually, why, why do we go to space? When I talk with, per with people that 
maybe involved with which may not be that interested in space as we are of course i'm biased and i think we we all are but there's a i think it's a feeling that i've seen i've seen even among, among my friends and if there's so many problems here on earth and the answer is yes they are Nonetheless, I don't believe uh, us um, withdrawing from space would solve any of us of, of them. And also, we should not forget that, yes, on the one hand, uh, space and increasing, uh, increasingly so may have maybe militarized, commercialized. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, the technologies developed are, um, for instance, the classic example of GPS. No, they specifically uh, have improved the lives of all the people of the globe, basically, and they come at the end of the day from GPS. A lot of other technologies have been tested first in rocket. Uh, they have been maybe the concept has been thought of, uh, thought, thought of, yeah, on on space missions. And at the end of the day, although at first they may sound, why do we, why do we pay for this? Uh, it flies, it it gets to orbit and returns. No, why do we pay for it? Um, at the end, the technologies actually end up. Um, benefiting the people. Uh, I do believe there's a statistic. I don't remember what I heard about, but there was a, um, a study that was made by for NASA. I do believe it's quite enlightening uh, in the sense that actually studied it's the impact it had on, on society, basically in inventions that help the people in new technologies, things that may be tested. For instance, space may also serve one day to manufacture better medicine, for instance. That's, that's a thing that's been talked about. Uh, NASA actually uh, calculated that for each dollar that was invested, in that case for NASA, no, for the mm -hmm. for such a uh, three, the effect value of three dollars was uh, reimbursed in uh, in the rest of society. So at the end of the day, I'd say it's a net benefit. So although we must never uh, forget the problems at home, in a sense, uh, we I'd say we must never uh, forget space either. Okay, I completely agree that um, the space career is pushing minds, is pushing ideas, is pushing technologies to improve, and there is a, a return on the air in a, in a good sense, and I'm, I'm completely agree. Um, I don't know if Alish has another question. Um, I'm really happy to be part of this, uh, this uh, conference today. Thank you very much for your time, for your effort, for your daily work. That is really inspiring and, and it's really amazing. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Alba. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I could ask yet another question. It's a very simple and maybe a more personal one. Hmm. So if you could uh, choose, where would you like to be? Uh, professionally in say 10 years from now? Do I jump in first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a typical question. You know, where do you see yourself in I don't know, yeah, 10 years, 20 years, two years? There's, there's, this, there's always variance to that question. I'd say in my case, um, I drive a lot of fulfillment for the work I, I do. So nonetheless, I don't mind where. Uh, I, I wouldn't say, of course, on space. I mean, if not, uh, if I wouldn't, why would, would I be in, in cosmic research? Nonetheless, I do believe the, the best you can search for is not a specific place, not a specific company, not a specific, but nonetheless, doing what you love, in this case, space on a project that is engaging, that where you are able to give your best and where, where you are happy to to give your best. I'd say that would be my ideal place to be in 10 years time. Of course, that's a bit subjective. I'm not really specific, but nonetheless, that's how I say it. Yeah, in my case, uh, I'm like Danny, but I imagine myself uh, working uh, in the space sector, um, helping to inspire the next generation of, of humans and yeah. That will be the, my dream. In that case, I, I can suggest that if you want to do and you want to start now, you can join WIA Barcelona and, and help us to, to with the same scope. <laughs> OK, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
more questions? Okay, and there are a lot more, more questions and, and I want to say thank you. And for now we can uh, just uh, close the, the call and, and that's all. Thank you.